Have you ever wanted to play a game, but say you watched a Let's Play or saw a clip on Twitter or TikTok of a specific section that looked way too long, unfair, or tedious? Did that prevent you from buying and playing that game? Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. You guys might know it from its stellar reputation. Even with its faults in some very dumb sections like the Simon Says Freddy minigame that you have to do all the time, the real ball buster of the game was this stupid mazer size puzzle. Well, now we even have strategy guys. It's pretty much comparable to a lunatic's chicken scratchings. So even with this guide, I have no idea what I'm looking at or what to do. Mazer size deterred me from wanting to buy the game because I don't want to deal with this obnoxious puzzle that it would have taken way too long for me to figure out. Because God knows if MatPat had trouble with it, everyone and their mother was going to be struggling with this. Chica's just as confused about this maze as we are. Then of course, you know, there are the terrible glitches in performance, but that's a whole other situation. But I modded the game to fix various issues like the visuals or the field of view, and it was a pretty fun game with those fixes. But then, when I got to the classic mazer size, I had to pull out a classic walkthrough only to find out they updated the puzzle code somewhere along the update cycle so now it's even harder to find a guide for it i don't know why they changed this <laughs> maybe it's just a mess of us i did not see this in the patch code i don't whatsoever. know but who cares i guess right i messed it up a little bit chat mall did but it's all good i got it in the end after cheating of course but you know that's neither here nor there so you guys might have noticed the thumbnail has some very different games feature doesn't it five nights at freddy's destiny 2 couldn't be more different from each other and yet they have prime examples of demotivating the player from interacting with the game from one bad puzzle so in destiny the best pieces of content are by far the raids they are Destiny's pinnacle endgame activities that separate the men from the filthy casuals. There are three notable raids to pick from that hammer home my point in this video. Vow of the Disciple, Crown of Sorrow, and Eater of Worlds. They all have one thing in common, a miserable opening encounter. This is much worse than having some puzzle randomly in the game that blows fat balls. That's because you can't experience the rest of the raid without either slogging through this opening or managing to swindle someone into giving you a checkpoint to skip it. Let me take a step back real quick and put it into perspective for those who don't know anything about Destiny 2 and likely clicked on the video because they saw Fredward Fazington in the thumbnail. These raids have very cool final bosses. Look at Vow for example. Here you have this lanky anime man following you around ready to kick you in the next week if you get too close. Attracting. Ah, you gotta shoot the glaive there, then you wanna get in the, the beam there, and then where do I go team? R2. R2. All right, R2. Let me head over there. Yeah. And that's how it's done. It's pretty cool. Then what makes him special is that when you're ready for DPS, unlike most bosses in the game, he will chase after you and attack you while you're also doing damage to him. Then compare that to the opening encounter. You follow this miserably slow station wagon looking thing to collect some space gas for it, and then it moves to another space gas station for you to collect some more space gas to put in it. And you do that like five times with literally no variety between each stop. It's an absolute snooze fest and I don't want to play the raid because of it. And don't even get me started on the fact that they thought this opening was so good that they made it a separate mission to play every week to level up for a year. Actually disconnected developers. Then there's another raid I have some beef with. The Crown of Sorrow, which needs two people to shoot this crystal occasionally while a bunch of fodder enemies run around that you need to kill. You do that for like five minutes and then you're done. Snooze fest. But here's the best part. This was not an opening encounter, but an actual real encounter. So God forbid you want anything from its loot table. Good thing it's not in the game anymore and they took it out. So, uh, you know, glad that's also a thing that happens in this game. Then there's the final raid, which is just the worst thing they've ever made. Eater of Worlds. You first start this raid by doing this jumping puzzle, which is just follow the leader. Only one person can be on a platform at a given time. So you just got to make sure everyone's moving in sequential order and then you win. It's just boring. Then to be rewarded for that snooze fest, you have the next encounter which is even more of a disaster. You would think a raid, the pinnacle endgame activity would require at least some, if not a little bit of brain power, especially if it's not the opening encounter. But get this, the task of this encounter is to just kill all the enemies until they stop coming, bruh. That's a snooze fest. So while an encounter in a destiny raid isn't necessarily best described as a puzzle, the example is still very fitting. These opening encounters shouldn't be part of the raids and only serves to demotivate the player from wanting to engage with that piece of content as some of the time it just doesn't even have a loot drop. Although I guess it's better than not wanting to interact with the whole game like in FNAF's worst examples, which don't worry, we'll, we'll get to more in a bit. The only scenario where a bad puzzle can exist and not be a detriment to the game is if your name is John Hollow. I would regard Hollow Knight as one of the greatest games I've ever played, but it's not immune to tedious game design. The puzzle where you have to bring this flower to a grave on the complete other side of the map without being hit once, kinda tedious. Although it doesn't have the same negative impact as the other puzzles, but why? 
two simple reasons. It's not part of the main game, and this is a completely optional side objective that only 100% completionists would need to accomplish. Then it also rewards game knowledge and tests you on it. Then there is also the fact that it's such a good game that we can excuse some bad flaws and puzzles here and there because the good stuff easily overshadows it. You can strategize for this quest easily, where you just set up a teleport and then clear all the enemies without sitting on a bench to reset and respawn them all. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I did on my first try on my speedrun achievement playthrough I did a couple of months ago. But with that being said, what about a bad game? Hey guys, it's Destiny again. Surprise. Back at the start of 2019, Bungie launched its secret community event, Niobe Labs. Teams of three would go into the lab with a specific set of weapons they've been grinding for the past season to solve very intricate puzzles together to open the final seasonal forge activity for the rest of the player base. One small oversight though. Niobe Labs was not being solved, but because it was bugged, of course. The casual player base started getting up in arms that they weren't able to access their mediocre seasonal activity as planned, and they wanted it so badly that Bungie caved in and released it to the public, leaving Niobe Labs to have no more stake in it because the title of being first in the world was the only thing left. Being first in the world for a stupid puzzle like this when you don't even get the heroics of being the guy who got you your stupid snooze fest activity, what's the point? Once again, the casuals aren't satisfied with 364 days out of the year being dedicated to them and when finally some attention and stakes are put on the hardcore community they lose their minds all right let's take a step back real quick niobe lab should be an example here where the devs made a change to try and alleviate issues with the puzzle the misstep was that they didn't just give us the missing hint because the game was broken because of course it was broken as destiny 2 they got rid of all the stakes that were involved with solving the puzzle they severely disincentivized the players from even finishing the puzzle because there was no longer any community-wide incentive. Although, there is another example of fixing a game discouraging puzzle. Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. Whoopee! We are back to FNAF! No more lame Destiny nonsense, am I right guys? So FNAF fans know about the infamous Spring Lock puzzle. It was insanely hard in comparison to the rest of the game, especially for only being Night 4, but then it was patched. It was made easier. That's it. End of story. A nice fix to get people to no longer be disincentivized to get the game. People won't be upset that they're spending too much time on night four and it feels unbalanced. Well done, Scott. Then he made a custom night for those who want to challenge. Wow, if only Bungie took a look at that, huh? But there is still more to talk about. There's another game with an interesting dilemma in regards to its puzzles. Remember back to Hollow Knight's case earlier? It's an optional side quest that's pretty easy. I did it on my first try on that playthrough. But what if you're required to do something tedious to progress a side quest? It's a pretty small game. I'm not sure everyone's heard about it. It's called... It's called zombies, you know? Everyone knows it, everyone loves it. People love to get their high rounds, kill the zombies any day of the week. But for hardcore zombie lovers, they have the Easter eggs. The main zombie games are made by Treyarch. They have been known to have phenomenal Easter egg main quests that add to the quality of each map they've released. It's so ingrained into zombies culture that the Steam Workshop custom maps will have them a lot of the time. That's great, especially since you can do Easter eggs in some of these genius custom maps like Cum City. But Treyarch's quality is hugely contrasted to the other COD companies making zombie games. Now, as much as I love Infinite Warfare Zombies, because it's by far the best non-Treyarch zombies experience, there are still some baffling things about it. You see this radioactive thing here? What if to complete the easter egg and beat this monster, you need to know how to do chemistry? Huh? Wouldn't it be super fun and epic to require a PhD in chemical sciences to know how to mix these various elements to solve the zombie video game puzzle? What do you mean? No! It's a great idea! But of course, nothing ever lasts forever. Do you like Morse code? Well, how about in Black Ops 4, Cherok makes you do some Morse code when, you know, there's... The best part is, that's not even the most annoying part of the specific map, and all the maps have some tedious nonsense like this that prevent me from even attempting to try and do the easter eggs. We know challenge is a necessary aspect of video games. Without it, gaming just becomes meaningless as you just turn your brain off way too hard and just autopilot everything. While that must be remembered, when making games it's also necessary to realize when you've gone too far. Complexity and tedium aren't appreciated by players and people will be deterred from games because of it. There's only so much nonsense that one person can take from a game constantly making tedious puzzles along with the tedious lore and tedious storytelling. So the moral of the story is, make the game hard, but fair, and don't screw it all up in the process.